Sorry. Yeah, good. Uh, we're well, back to the Josh. Good on you. Thank you. Um, you. You've seen and done a lot with England. Where does where does being part of the sixth highest Test partnership of all time uh, rank among your experiences? Um, yeah, I think I just thoroughly enjoyed that partnership with Zach. Um, it's a pleasure to watch him from the other end. Um, you know, unfurled a quite incredible innings there. It was a pleasure to watch. He hits the ball incredibly hard, shots all around the wicket. Um, and he's a great kid to bat with. So really enjoyed it. Great fun. Um, and, and glad that we were able to put together a really good partnership and put us in a strong position in the game. Uh, a couple of years since your previous Test 100, did, did you find that actually helping Zach along and sort of coaching him along and being the senior man, did that take you out of your own head and have, have you less focused on your own milestone? Um, maybe yesterday. I'd say not not today, really. Um, I think I you know, spent a bit of time thinking about it um, and sort of you know, that on and off period at the start of the day as well was not ideal to sort of get into rhythm and, and you just wanted to get in the game and, and try and get there really. So, um, yeah, very aware of, um, you know, I'm just desperate to, to reach that milestone. Um, you know, I was probably more nervous than Zach was last night, I'd say. So, um, yeah, just delighted to be able to get there. Thank you. Dean Wilson, please. Yeah. Uh, hi, Josh. Well played. Um, we've talked to you many times about sort of tempo of of batting and things like that and, and the difference between one day batting and test batting and, and all that sort of stuff. But is it fair to say, and did you feel as though that was probably your most test-like innings in the kind of traditional sense of the word, you know, really trusting that defence, leaving the ball so well? I think you went almost 38 overs without hitting a boundary at one stage. I mean, does that feel like real test match batting to you? Yeah, I think so. And, and I think I um, had a really clear game plan. Um, and I think that's really the, the crux of it is, is working out my game plan, um, you know, adapting that to any given scenario and, and sticking to it. Um, I thought I did that well today. And, you know, I actually felt like I probably lost my rhythm a bit. You know, would have liked to maybe have been a, a bit more positive. Like you say, didn't score any boundaries for a long period of time. So um, maybe just lost a little bit of energy in my batting. But you know, certainly yesterday I felt was was some of the best I've felt at the crease. Um, you know, really disciplined with my game plan, my movements were good and, and felt really balanced. And, and from that position, it allows you to make good decisions. So, um, and I think, like I said, the you know, tempo is good. I know when I play well, I leave the ball well. Um, and that's part of my game plan. So, um, yeah, like you say, it's a nice tempo for me to, to play at, especially yesterday. And how much satisfaction do you get from the length of the innings, for example? I mean, Ben Stokes has spoken to us about facing more than 300 balls. He never thought he'd actually have the patience to do that. Um, how much satisfaction do you get from, from facing so many balls and batting for such a long period of time? Yeah, I was just trying to make it last as long as possible and um, you know, felt really good out there. So just wanted to, to keep going and, and knowing the position we're in in the series, um, if we could pile on some first innings runs and, and bat for as long as possible, it would um, you know, sort of take the option of Pakistan sort of winning this game and, and levelling the series, make it really tough for them. So um, you know, it was a really good wicket as well. We found it was a, you know, probably one of the better wickets we've played on recently. Um, and yes, yeah, it's definitely the first time and I've ever faced that many balls. Um, you know, so it's uh, yeah, nice to be able to sort of prove to myself I can, I can bat for that long. Thank you. OK, John Etheridge, please. Uh, Josh, I, 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 I've joined us a little bit late, but uh, I'm not... Oh. I don't think you've been asked about uh, Zach in particular, so I just wonder what you thought of his innings, really. Yeah, it was a pleasure to watch. Um, I've been really impressed with Zach um, you know, around the group and, and the way he's played. I think he's got a really positive outlook on his, his batting. He looks to take the game on. He's a great kid um, and he deserves everything he got today. I thought you know, it was a pleasure to watch from the other end. He had shots all around the wicket off the uh, front and back foot. Um, he looked incredibly tough to bowl to and... Um, as fair to say, I haven't seen many guys hit the ball as hard as he does either. He, he times it incredibly well. He's obviously a big guy. He, he smacks it. Um, you know, so it was a, a pleasure to watch. And you know, like he says, he just sort of went through the gears as well and, and really put Pakistan under a lot of pressure. 
it could be the start of something quite special in a, as far as his career is concerned. More, more hundreds to come, maybe. Yeah, absolutely. It's certainly not going. He's going to score a few more. Um, you know, I thought it was a fantastic innings. It, it'll give him a huge amount of confidence. Obviously, you know, he's, he's done pretty well uh, already in his short career. But you know, an innings of that magnitude will give him so much confidence and belief um, to take forward. And he's a he's a great kid. He's got a very level head on his shoulders, and he won't get ahead of himself. And and he'll be hungry for more. So um, yeah, I think it'll be the the start of a very special career. Thank you. Okay, two more, Rob Johnson and uh, Stefan Shelnick, please, from the BBC. Go ahead, Rob. Hi, Josh, well played. Um, just, I think earlier in the summer, Joe said that he was um, quite impressed with how you were playing technically, and I just wondered whether you've done any work on your technique and any specifics around that. Yeah, um, we worked on a few things. I think the, the period of um, lockdown was, was quite good to sort of reflect on my batting and and sort of some things that I felt like I needed to improve. And um, and I think, yeah, I've, I've, I've felt good at the crease. A lot of my practice is sort of outcome-based. So I've spent a lot of time in practice just trying to hit on drives. Um, for me, I know if I can I can hit that shot, um, it means I'm in, in a really good position. And, um, you know, that's the shot I look to try and line up um, all day. And, and, you know, Joe's given me a lot of confidence. I had some good chats with him uh, about batting. Um, and, you know, it's... A, as a captain, he's given me a lot of, of confidence and he has a lot of belief in me and I think that's sort of really shone through for me as well. Thank you. Stefan, last one, please. Hi, Joss. Um, do you think that sometimes the, the brilliant things you've achieved in white ball cricket have led you to maybe be criticised more in test cricket when you haven't quite reached those heights? And have what you achieved this summer left you feeling maybe more at home in Test cricket than you than you ever have before? Um, no, no, it's a tough question. It's, you know, probably a couple of games ago, probably thinking I was about to get dropped. So, um, you know, certainly, it's, it, it just proves to to me how um, you know you're never far away. Um, you know, I think you never got to maintain that belief in yourself. I've certainly questioned myself at times um, in the last few weeks, but um, I found a really good headspace um, to sort of keep hanging in there and, and you know, sort of that realisation that you're never really that far away um, from both good things and bad things happening. You know? So when it when it gets good, you, you know, you've got to stay very level and, and know that you've got to keep working hard because things can change fast. Um, but it's maybe that positive outlook and and um, belief that you can you can do good things um, has really served me well in the in the last few weeks. Um, and so yeah, I, I especially just really enjoyed it as well. I think I you know, really miss cricket in the lockdown. You sort of really enjoyed the break, and you come back into it. You sort of um, you know realise how much you you want to play and how much playing for England is is a pleasure. So um, yeah, I think all those things are the above. Thank you. I'll just sneak you in the last one then, if that's okay. Thank you. Yeah, cheers. Uh, hi, Joss. Well about it. Um, do you feel you're benefiting from being part of the test bubble? Because in a normal summer, you'd be pulled in you know, three different directions, essentially. Has it been a benefit to you to just be able to focus solely on one format? Um, I'd say not, not particularly, really. I, I think if I, look, um, you know, if I look at my game, obviously, I'm, I'm, you know, test cricket would would be number three in, in terms of my strength. So um, certainly over some previous years, I take a lot of confidence from white ball cricket. Um, you know, it is my strength and you know, scoring runs in that format or, or playing well and, and being able to bring that confidence into test cricket has, has served me really well. So I think in the last 12 months, I've, I've only played three T20s, I think, which is, is probably unheard of for me, having the amount of white ball cricket I usually play. So... Um, but certainly in this this period and and the lead into these this test bubble, it's been you know, nice to have a real training block as well. It's something we don't really get very often. You're always sort of planning to your practice around you know the next match, which is usually in a couple of days' time. So having that period in lockdown to get away from the game and then start you know gradually thinking about it and things that I'd like to improve and. And that individual training block to start with, where you could just you know, focus on my batting and, and sort of come. I think it's been a really beneficial thing for me to sort of you know look at a few things and, and sort of try and work a few things out. And and it's been nice now at this game to sort of get some rewards. When was the last time you hit a white ball? Uh, back in South Africa um, in those T20s. So, um, I've got a few in my bag that I'm itching to get out. 
Cheers. Thanks, everyone. Cheers. Thanks. Good evening.